Today, mapping rental stress. Hi again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics, one of the post to covering finance and prop news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Today I want to just talk further about my modelling and specifically look at rental stress. I've been asked to do this by a number of people who are quite concerned with what's going on in that sector of the market, and rightly so. Just to start that conversation, just to remind you as well, we do research this on a daily basis and model on a weekly and monthly basis, simply because our research is driven by household surveys, which come in every week, and we then model it. And that allows us to understand what's going on, dynamically speaking, in the market. And we look at it down to a postcode level, which is always quite helpful because averages mask. And we can slice and dice the data, looking at it from a geographic perspective, from a segmentation perspective, and from a buyer perspective as well and we can also look ahead using our scenarios and by looking at things like mortgage stress and price trajectory and buying and selling intentions migration and economic and CPI data we can model that and come up with some views of what's going on. Now last week I presented the initial information from our July research and I highlighted the fact that rental stress has gone through the roof in the last month. We're now at 50.48% of households. That is horribly high. It's higher than it's ever been. And you can see there the trajectory over recent times that in fact rental stress is running very hard and fast. And in fact the July data shows that 50.48% of households are exposed and that rental stress is highest in New South Wales at 61.42%. It's high in the ACT at 58.99% of households. And then we look down the list and you can see there that Queensland's at 49.9%. Rental stress in Queensland has been rising very fast in recent times. It's high in Victoria at 49.52%. And in Tasmania, bit of a standout at 52.42%. The other states are lower. And if you look at it by way of our segments, you can see there that multicultural establishment households, they're the first generation Australians, are sitting at more than 70% in rental stress. Young growing families at 59.64% and mature stable families at 61%. But even more affluent households, whether they're exclusive professionals or indeed young affluents, are also feeling the pain, which is also spread more broadly to our segments out on the urban fringe and also those in the lower socioeconomic groups as well. So rental stress is a big deal and it's hitting many different types of households, unfortunately. Now what I want to do is to show you some of the mapping results and what I've done here is to map the number of households in rental stress down to a postcode level based on my models up to the end of July. And it tells a pretty sorry story unfortunately because we know that many households are really up against it, not least of course because rental stress is driven by partly rising rents but also more broadly the cost of living as typified by the inflation numbers which of course officially are bad but in reality are much worse. And just remember that inflation is driven by rising rents and there's a lag between the inflation reported and the rents rising because essentially the ABS tries to take an average of all rents whether they've been renewed recently or historically. The bottom line is this, rental stress is rising, it's spreading and getting more severe and given the rising costs of gas and electricity later, as well as just more inflation more generally, things are going to get probably worse ahead. Anyway, let's now look at the information at a mapping level. So this is a map of Greater Melbourne. And you can see here the household count. And we've 
I've coded it so that the orange, yellows and reds are the highest count. Now one interesting question I get asked about is why do I map counts rather than the percentage of households? I do have that percentage data. The problem is that a postcodes with a small number of households could have a large number of stressed households and that would give you a very high percentage reading. The question is, is that the most effective way of telling the story? I prefer to look in the hotspots where we have the largest number of households in a particular area because it's about numbers and big numbers really, I think, give us a better feel of what's going on. So this is Greater Melbourne and the first observation is right in the middle of town there, Victoria 3000, we have a significant number of stressed renters and that's because there are issues with income, particularly for people working in the centre of town, but also rents have been rising quite fast. If we then go out west down towards Wyndham we can see that there's a really big hot spot there. If you go north, there's a hot spot there. And you go down towards Greater Dandelong, and there's a hot spot there. And if we pull out a little further, we can really see just how significant these bands of stress are. They really do pretty much surround Greater Melbourne. Now at this point, let me just show you the top rental stressed postcodes across the country because I want to make the point that Queensland and New South Wales is leading the way and in fact these postcodes in Melbourne that I've highlighted are a little bit further down the list in terms of the absolute number in difficulty. So here is the Toowoomba postcode 4350 and it really stands out as does the postcode 4305 which is west of Brisbane and of course that's the Ipswich area. Now if we then move across and look at Greater Brisbane we can see that there are quite a few stresses and strains down towards the Gold Coast including Postcode 4215, which includes Southport and Labrador, with more than 10,000 households in that particular postcode. And you can see going inland, there are significant numbers there also in difficulty. And if you head up north towards the Sunshine Coast and Moreton Bay, once again, we do see some areas of difficulty including 4551. If we then jump now to Greater Sydney, once again we do see big issues out west around Liverpool and other areas out that way too, up towards the hills and also 2770 which includes Lethbridge Park, Mount Druitt and areas such as that. And in fact, in 2770, there's more than 10,000 households in rental stress in that particular area. Now, if you come over and look at the areas closer into Sydney, we can do, we do see some areas of difficulty too. Not quite so severe in terms of counts, but still a large number of postcodes closer in are now registering significant problems, running from Parramatta through to Ryde and from Canterbury Bankstown through to Sydney and down towards the Sutherland Shire as well. Now another hot spot in the Greater Sydney area is around the Central Coast where again we do see a number of postcodes in difficulty including 2250 which includes areas such as Gosford and there's another hot spot in and around the Shoalhaven in areas including Jarvis Bay. Now one of the issues there of course is that that was a significant area that was hit by the fires a couple of years ago 
And so the availability of accommodation is pretty sparse before you start. Now, if I compare that with the ACT, there are some hotspots in and around the ACT, but not so high counts. And that is, of course, because of the lower population density in that particular area. If we then move across to Adelaide. And once again, we do see areas of rental stress, not necessarily as severe in terms of numbers, but there are a considerable number of postcodes to the north and south of the centre of Adelaide uh, that are registering considerable issues. If I go across to Greater Perth, once again, the story is patchwork. To the north and to the south of the city, there are quite a few areas where rental stress is a problem. And one of them in particular that stands out is postcode 6061, north of Perth, as well as a number of suburbs to the north of Perth on the coast. And if you drop down further south towards Mandra, Mandra's postcode 6210, also it's registering very high levels of rental stress. And we know from earlier work that there are still a number of property investors in this area around here who are in negative equity and are struggling with properties that really are not making a return at the moment. Now, if we look at Hobart in the surrounding area, there are some areas of pressure, although the population density is quite a lot lower. And there is a particular hotspot in postcodes such as 7250, just close to Launceston in northern Tasmania. And finally to Darwin, where postcode 0810 registered as the most rental stressed postcode in that area. But again, the population densities are very low. So what's to make of all this? Well, it seems to me that we have a really critical crisis running at the moment in Australia relating specifically to rental stress. There's more than 2 million households who are struggling to make their rental payments on time. Many of them are being faced with considerable rent rises not least because property investors are seeing the interest on their mortgages going up and they want to try and pass it on. And we also have quite a lot of evidence from our surveys of people being forced to move again and then again, trying to chase cheaper rentals. And one other factor that's worth understanding is that many people, when they're in rental stress, seek cheaper accommodation and are therefore moving into less convenient locations perhaps further away from the centre of town, or indeed smaller accommodation or less salubrious accommodation. The rental stress crisis is among us and it's getting worse. But I have to say, if you look in the newspapers, there's at least a 10 times focus on mortgage stress relative to rental stress. And yet there are more people in rental stress than mortgage stress. So how does that work? Well, one of my objectives with this post, and I'll be making more later, is to just highlight again that the rental stress crisis is critical. It needs immediate attention. And it shows once again that the current leave it to the market attitude for providing housing for those who can't afford to get a mortgage and to borrow to get a property is actually not working either. So that means we have more people today than ever before in Australia renting property with more people than ever before in rental stress. And we also have more people than ever before in mortgage stress as well. So combined, there are thousands and thousands of people in many postcodes across the country right up against it. And of course, facing right in the teeth of the inflation Gale. As for what can be done, well, it's really important, I think, that both states and the feds think differently about how to deal with rental affordability and also make the point that the government benefits and support for renters 
is just not adequate enough, let alone those who are working and trying to cover their rental costs. And once again, let me underscore, incomes in real terms have not risen for a decade now and are continuing to go backwards. And in fact, the latest from the RBA suggests they will continue to go backwards into the future, not least because of the ever-increasing costs of energy. So this is a major societal and structural issue in Australia. I just don't think that it's being taken seriously enough. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.